final speaker is uh, Ms. Natsuki Kikuya. Uh, she actually comes from a uh, sake brewing family that's been running for more than three centuries. Uh, however, having <coughs> taken a detour in other uh, <coughs> Uh, <clears throat> pursuits. Uh, she came back to her roots and uh, she has been working to promote sake here in London. Um, if you saw uh, Ria-san's uh, <clears throat> film uh, just a few minutes ago, you will have seen her in one of the uh, pictures, but uh, she won the IWC's Sake Communicator Award in 2011. So with that brief interest, uh, uh, that's it, please. <coughs> Good evening, everybody. Uh, at the beginning, thank you very much for uh, this opportunity. Thank you very much for coming for this uh, um, this talk. Um, and I forgot to mention it. Um, downstairs, after after this seminar, after I start, uh, finish talking, we'll have all the taste of the. Uh, Chef Masa's uh, dip and also the all the selection of the IWC uh, awards winning sake that's co uh, contributed from the sake samurai. Thank you very much for that. Um, so today I'd like to talk about how to enjoy sake in the format of the sense uh, how the sake has been culturally um, accepted and enjoyed from the Japanese people for many many years. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Kawakami introduced me as uh, my, my coming, uh, coming myself coming from the roots that uh, producing a sake for about 350, uh, 65 years in uh, Akita Prefecture, northwest part of Japan. And this picture you see uh, in the background is uh, actually a bright brick print of my home brewery in Akita. The, my brewery is in the middle. It looks like a house, but the sake brewery used to be this small. So uh, very, very local to the area in Japan. And you see all the snowfalls because the Akita has a lot of heavy snowfalls in the winter time. And you see the horse and the carri carriage and the guy going inside of the sake brewery. <coughs> and sake brewery today is you know, the, just uh, the functioning as a, as a sake maker. But a uh, long time ago, around the Edo era, it was quite common that the sake maker also sells their sake. Uh, in front of the house and also serve it as like a bar, sake bar. So this actually print coming from the story that uh, there was a guy who owns the horse and the carriage with every, uh, after work, every single day, he comes and stop in front of my brewery and drink for long, long hours. <laughs> and uh, even, even after he passed away, the horse was still alive and young that he couldn't, uh, even the owner was uh, passed away, the horse, uh, he, cause he, he was very used to it, he, he stopped in front of the brewery <laughs> and never let, uh, let himself go. <laughs> so that was coming from this story. So myself, um, I, I used to work with uh, Masa um, at the Zuma restaurant as a sake sommelier, and then uh, uh, moved myself to the Roka restaurant, which is the same owner, Japanese, modern Japanese restaurant, uh, two locations in London as a head sake sommelier. And about four months ago, I was uh, courage enough to spin out and to be independent to promote sake. And now I have my own project uh, called Pro uh, Museum of Sake. So it's an in in invisible uh, museum that doesn't exist at this moment to <laughs> introduce the culture of sake to uh, British people. So the first of all, coming from the history, um, as everybody almost um, believes that everybody know that <coughs> Japanese people are coming from the strong rice culture. Um, it's called Inasaku culture, which is a wet rice cultivation culture. So as a byproduct of rice, uh, we've been producing sake over 25,000 years. And the uh, very first sake, how the sake was created, does anybody know the story? Maybe some of you know already. They call it Kuchikami no sake, uh, meaning mouse chewing sake. So the ladies, actually the very first sake was made, was made in a religious monastery uh, called in Shinto religion, shrines. And in these shrines, there were, there were ladies who worked for the gods. And they're around probably 14, 15 years old. They're all virgins. So what the, one of their role was uh, chewing the steamed rice and then spit it into the 
pot, clay pot, and the uh, enzymes in the saliva work well with the starch of the rice and ferment it into a <coughs> sake. So that was a bit disgusting uh, region. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that time, uh, it was considered a very sacred drink. And by consuming the sake, you could communicate with the gods, uh, which was the mountain and the river and the oceans, the Shinto origin of the Shinto religion. And even today, we still celebrate various uh, cultural, seasonal events uh, with sake because we still have a lot of Shinto uh, culture. As you see in the picture, um, in the middle, we drink the, we welcome the New Year's coming by drinking the sake called otoso to cleanse ourselves and purify our body for the New Year's. And if you see on the right hand side, which is a wedding ceremony, traditional wedding ceremony in Japan, that the young wedding couple is uh, breaking the barrel of sake uh, the hammer with the both families. So by breaking the, the top of the, of the barrel, they're kind of wishing for the new luck. So anything starting new or changing yourself, um, for, or wishing for the good luck, we, con we drink and share the uh, uh, bottle of sake together with the family and friends. <laughs> so moving on to the sake today, I put uh, three keywords to introducing uh, how sake is uh, recognized in Japan today. One first word is modernization. So you've been seeing this whole long history of uh, sake, 2,500 years. So every era, every uh, years, we've been developing the technologies, the techniques, all the methods to make the sake better. And I have to say that uh, today, the quality of the sake is the best of all the history. And but, uh, uh, there's another another side that uh, I have to emphasize is what uh, Ms. Rie was uh, mentioning at the earlier that the sake consumption in, in inside of Japan is decreasing enormously. So as, as you saw, the number of breweries dropping every single year, and uh, this year we have 15,000. But I have to say, probably well, less less than the 1,000 brewery still produces sake. So some of them are almost in danger of. Uh, um, by production. And <clears throat> it's coming from the, from the westernization <coughs> of the Japanese culture, many various reasons, but I have to mention that uh, sake quality is the best of all, so we have to drink it. <laughs> <laughs> and the second uh, keyword is localization. So sake has quite interesting um, um, industri industrial back, um, structure that it's almost like a like oguro oguro pro holistic i don't know how to say it, but the top 6 brewery with, with uh, top 6 brewer, sake breweries which is over 10 billion yen in sales uh, dominates the 40% of the whole sake market so that means the top big companies making a most of the of the sake and there are so many small breweries that more based in the lo local regions, making handcrafted sakes, uh, much, much smaller. Probably, I have to say, many of them are family owned and very, very small. These are the ones that are uh, quite suffering from the decoration of the consumption of the sake. So, uh, but because of, uh, because of uh, even though this uh, of the structure, uh, there is a trend called jizake uh, booms in Japan. Jizake means local sake. So, Affecting the Western wine culture, that is so much about the terroirs, so much about the you know the lands and makers and how it's the, uh, how the wine is made. Of. So a lot of consumers, Japanese consumers, started to realize, oh, we have to consume the local sake. We have to you know know who is making the sake actually. So all the makers started to making focusing on okay, we're not focusing on the very brand Yamada Nishiki rice from only one region, which is twice more expensive than our local sake rice. They started using the local rice, local yeast, local anything, pretty much, to, like, um, to, to make the sake as local as possible. So I think it's a very good tendency. The market is going forward. The third, um, the third keyword is globalization. This is also another continuous story from Rie, Rie san that uh, sake is becoming uh, much more global, global and the 
starting from the American ginjo booms uh, probably 15, 20 years ago, the popularity of sake overseas has been increasing uh, every, by, uh, every year by year. Um, and that even though the earthquake that happened uh, I don't know, three years ago almost, the, 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 the export sales has been still continuous to grow and the last year is uh, every single year is the most uh, export sales and consumption of any other year behind. So we have to see this as a positive news and I'm very, very happy to introduce you today as how the art of the beauty of the sake today because you are the one that is holding the sake, uh, future of the sake. <laughs> and uh, this is a picture on the right hand side. It's actually uh, last year in the summer and Olympic time that we had a pop up sake bar that, um, below the London ice and there was every single there were so many customers uh, enjoying the sake. So it was a very good, very good to see. So we had an explanation earlier of the, how the sake, what the sake is made from. So maybe I don't need much uh, explanation. But just the one ingredient that I want, want to emphasize, the third one, the koji. Uh, it's the same ingredients that uh, Chef Masa introduced earlier for miso making and also it's made used for soy sauce making because Japan has a very humidity climate that our culture or our uh, climate is perfect for uh, fermentation uh, for the food and everything. Like I think at this moment, uh, the month of June, we're going to have a heavy uh, raining season, suyu season in Japan. Everything is wet and very sticky and but seasons coming. But because of this, we developed a very good uh, fermenting food culture. And koji is a type of mold, type of fungus that we use uh, for, it's an essential ingredient for sake making. Because uh, for the fermentation process, you have to have some sort of sugar to turn the um, ingredients into alcohol. The koji actually transforms the starch into sugar. That's uh, that's a, uh, actually a option, uh, the essential ingredients because rice doesn't have enough sugar like the wine does for the grapes. And today, um, I wanted to introduce how the sake can be so um, close to you, and you know, some some can be some drink that you can drink at home because at this moment, sake is still something mysterious, still something understandable that you can only drink at the Japanese restaurant. But sushi is not the only option to drink sake, and I highly recognize for you to uh, buy a bottle of sake at, uh, and drink it, and enjoy it at home. But first of all, you have to know, you know how to buy, buy the sake. And uh, probably I would recommend the Japan, either Japan Center in Piccadilly Circus or the Hedonism, Hedonism Wine in uh, Bond Street, that's a wine shop but they have the most number of the sake um, in London, I'd say. And sometimes it's a, a wide range of the selection might be very confusing for you. But I wanted to give you a little bit of a tip today, how to read the table. It's actually coming from the ha handout that we passed out uh, earlier. So if you can bring it home, try to see what, I don't expect you to read the Japanese uh, language, but if you could somehow um, recognize some of the numbers that it's saying, you can maybe, you can guess you know, what is almost written on the bottle. So, this sake is Tate no Kawa um, from Niigata Prefecture. You see in the middle of the bot bottom they have the alphabet. Some of the maker doesn't have a uh, alphabetical li uh, lightings on it, but normally the biggest one in the middle is the brand names. And then, uh, you have to check sometime that it's, it's even if it's said uh, Nihonshu, which is the, the sake in Japanese, the yellow, yellow sake one. Because I realized some of the retail shops, they don't know much about sake. So they sell products as sake, but uh, quite often I found some of the Chinese spirits or Chinese other drinks are mixed in, in, the, in the sales section. So if you see this Nihon, Nihon means Japan, Shu means alcohol, so sake in Japanese called Nihonshu. <coughs> if you see something like this, this is sake, so you can <laughs> mix <it up. laughs>